I'm already out of sorts, so I don't feel. Oh, I'm out of sorts. So I'm going to do the best I can to bring myself back in to the reservation. All right? We're going we're gonna to be looking at Romans chapter 9, though, verse 11. Chapter 9, verse 11, starting there. It's good to know you got a reason to be here. All right? Because there's nothing like living life and don't know why you showed up. So I think that uh, you hear me mention oftentimes about purpose. Everybody has always uh, should have purpose in mind because there has to be a purpose for everything because matter of fact God said I created all things was created by me. Everything was created for him. Everything was created for his purpose and his pleasure. And man I believe God is having a good time. <laughs> Sometimes we think we want to have a good time, but God is having a good time, even, in, even when you think he's not, because he said, I did all this for my pleasure and my purpose. So even when you think you're not having a good time, God is still having a good time. What makes him have a good time is the fact that he knows everything. We get caught up in a moment, and if it's a bad moment, we feel like God doesn't turn bad. But see, God knows the end from the beginning, so it makes it a lot of easier for him to have a good time. And I know I've, I've really made him laugh a lot of time because I would get in situations and thought, oh, God, I can't make it. All the while, he already know I am. He, I'm telling God I can't take it. That's just a lot because you know what? He knows how much we can take. Amen. Now, I, have, I do have what I call my tap off where I feel like I can't go no further. But what I found out about God is every place I said I couldn't, he did. And so he keeps going even when I don't want to go. So we, we were, we're going to be talking about God's purpose, but not just his purpose because our problem is not his purpose. Our problem become our motives for trying to implement perceived purpose. I'll get to that. Just keep that on the back burner. I know God has a purpose. And sometimes, you, you, know, in, in, you know what I find out about most people? We like to be carbon copies of somebody else. Everybody wants to be somebody else, you know, when I was growing up, I would have been a better, better basketball player if I'd had Air Jordans. I asked my son one time. He said, Dad, I got to have Jordan. I said, what is it going to do for you? Is it going to help you jump higher? He said, yeah. <laughs> but everybody wants to be somebody else. You always look in and see somebody else. You think that, boy, if I just had their life. You know what I found out about life, though? Don't wish for somebody else's life because you don't know their problem. Right? And just because you think they don't have none, trust me. Man that's born a woman is few days. And guess what? Got a lot of mess in him. <laughs> a lot of troubles in him. And so what are you? You don't have to make trouble come. You was born. You was already in trouble when you showed up. So understanding that, that's why we have to understand that God has a purpose for us. Now, in verse 11, Romans chapter 9, the Bible says, For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to the election might stand not of works, but of him that calleth. First thing you need to understand, you didn't call yourself. I didn't, even, I didn't even ask permission to be born. 
they, they, they throw that on me. I woke up one day and realized I was here. But I asked nobody to come. Nobody asked anybody to be, can I be born? No. I never asked. So I have to realize that the reason I am here is because there's one who did call me to be here. And for that reason, he had a purpose for me being here. I told y'all before. Now, if me and God sat down and talked about things, I could tell him a few things. I could show him some things that he probably missed in my life. <laughs> I, could, I could tell him, I could counsel with him and tell him what could have happened if he would have gave me a few more inches. You know what I'm saying? If he had just let me be like 7'2", my life would be different. I would have been a different man. Jarvis, you'd have been really blessed today. You'd been saying, man, I know that guy, man. I know him real well, man. I, I know him personally because, see, they've been saying my name. Kelly, Kelly, that's my man. He can't do it. No one can. You know what I'm saying? I'd have my name in lights. But God knew if he made me five feet eight, ain't a whole lot of things I'm going to be doing life. <laughs> he, he cut me out a lot of stuff. So, but he had a purpose. He had a purpose for you. My purpose is not yours, and yours is not mine. I got to figure out, because see, God said, now I call these two boys here. Before they ever done anything, they, it wasn't about good, it wasn't about evil, but I had a purpose for them. You read the Bible a lot of times, and, you know, I used to say, uh, because people always say, man, you know, uh, everybody's got their own free will. That's true in a, in a certain sense, but there's no will that you have that outwills his will. Okay? There, there's not one thing that you're going to do that out trumps his. Because no matter how many wills you think you got, we live by his will. Right? He ain't giving that up. Because if he doesn't have a will, he doesn't even have a purpose for you. So, see, I might know how. Just like when he bought the nation of Israel out of Egypt. They tell me that journey would take an, at least at best 11 days to get from Egypt to Canaan. 11 day journey. How long did it take? 40 years. And notice what God said. I could have taken you a different way. He could have made it 11 days. But he said, I chose to take you through the desert, take you where the scorpions were, and all the things in life. See, some people think because they feel like they're having a bad life, their life can't get better. But see, God got a plan. That if you endure, there is something after endurance. There is always something. Now, I don't know if anybody, maybe y'all have one of them plastic lights where everything worked right, but I ain't had that one at all. Mine didn't even come close. But I can look back on everything that I thought was devastated and tell you today, it has all worked out for the good. That's all, he, that's all he says, you know. All things will work together. But you got to stay in the next verse. Because <laughs> the next verse is what messes up everybody. All things work together for the good to them that do what now? Love? Oh, see, there's a difference. Because... We want things to work good without loving God. That's why good gets messed up in our life because we want to be good enough to get his love. You can't get good enough. See, because you don't get good enough to get him. He's good enough that he's going to accept you. Because you have nothing. I hear people all the time talking about what they gave God. You have nothing to offer God that he can use. Not one thing other than your faith in him. Nothing else. 
He can't use my money. They ain't got ATMs in heaven. <laughs> they ain't got no cars in heaven, no houses, none of that stuff. So nothing I can give him. You know, we brag about, boy, I made a sacrifice. You haven't made nothing. The greatest sacrifice a man can lay. What do you say? No greater love than a man can have. They lay down his life. I ain't laid down my life for anybody. Like I said, me and my wife was in a, in a, went to Six Flags one time. <laughs> we, went, we went to Six Flags one time, was having a good day, and they had that big thing called a Screaming Eagle. And she was not really into the roller coasters, and she was saying, my mama told me never get on a roller coaster. I said, baby, it's me. I got you. <clears throat> I said, see all them people smiling, them couples? You going to send me up here all by myself? And she said, we kept walking in the line. So I got her so far in the line where we couldn't turn around and go back. And she all the way there saying, honey, I don't think I want to get on that. I said, baby, look, I got you. I said, I love you. I got you. I remember getting, finally she got on with me, see. No, she said, promise me <laughs> that you're going to hold my hand. When I, you know, I had every intention of loving her like that. But we got, in the, we got in the roller coaster and got all the way up to the top. And I realized how high we were. And I seen it go up like this, and the guy in front of me just dropped off the map. I heard us say, honey, <laughs> you said you are going to hold my hand. But see, I didn't say when. No, I didn't say when. Because we is up here in a state where one of us may not live. And I did not feel like laying down my life right then. Now, I'm holding on to you know what I'm saying? I got my hand, I got Prince in that bar holding on. She's screaming and hollering, kicking me and going on. Hold my hand. No, baby. In case we don't make it, somebody got to tell this story. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> I don't know why I told y'all that, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> How did I get off on that? But, it, you know, it's not like you're going to get good enough. The, the greatest. <laughs> you can't go through that little crack either. You can't. I, I told you she's on a different page. But anyway, <laughs> we, we, we spent so many years. Live in and don't recognize life. That's the first thing. Because if you hear most people talking, making a living is not making life. It's just making a living. A big difference. You know, a lot of times we got the living part together, but we don't have the life part together. I shared with them this morning. One thing I look for in life, peace. That's all I want. The only thing that in my life that identifies more with Christ than anything else is the peace he gives. Remember what he said? My peace I give. Most people don't understand why he said that. Because people get robbed of peace, get robbed of power. They don't have any control. Peace is what controls everything. I let peace control me. Matter of fact, the Bible says let the peace of God rule. In other words, he's telling you the peace in your life is the referee of your life. I don't make decisions in turmoil. I'm not, I'm not trying. It's nothing like getting frantic, and I have in my lifetime been so depressed. I used to wake up every Monday morning so depressed I couldn't stand it. I'd be wondering, what's wrong with you? I'd be so depressed over nothing. I'd go through the house, check the refrigerator, got a couple pieces of meat in here, got a few cans in the cabinet, 
Light bills pay, water bills pay, rent pay. Why am I depressed? And the reason I tell you this is because a lot of people let those things become their forces that determines on whether or not they're happy. Jesus said, though I come, that you might have life. Now, first of all, we look for God to improve our living. We don't expect him to improve our life. So we put God more in our living situation. Because, see, if I drive a Lamborghini, you know what you're going to say? That dude show is blessed. Right? I, not, I may have more problems than a sinner people falling arches, but you're going to swear I'm blessed. If I come here with a big wad, Tennessee wad in my pocket, you know, 51s on the inside with 200s on the outside, you're going to say, he's blessed. You know what I'm saying? Because our blessing, our living, our life goes just the opposite of what God said. Life does not consist of the things that you possess. Never. So if you're gauging whether or not you're living by what you got, then you already missed out on life. Because life is about peace. The things that Jesus gave you, Peace, righteousness, joy, all those things. That's what real life is. The Bible even said, he blessed me with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Do you know most people don't go for that? You know why they don't go for that? Because you can't see that. You can't see the real peace in people's lives. You can't really see the richness of that. So, let me keep reading. Verse 12, it was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. And there's always a reason why he makes it like that. That's why the Bible talks about being born again. Why? See, your old man's got to come subjected to the new man. The elder, until you teach the elder you to serve the younger you, you're never going to be right. So what happened, he said, now, I'm painting you a picture. I'm going to have two boys. Firstborn is going to be Esau, and I'm going to have that other one, Jacob. I love Jacob. And if you looked at Jacob, Esau, when you looked at Esau's life, Esau wasn't a bad boy. But Jacob was a handful. What did Esau do? Nothing. He's just a hunter. Now, Jacob, he was slicker than all get out. Dude was a, his name meant deceiver, schemer, liar. He lied his way on in. So God wasn't looking at them. He was looking at choice of purpose. Esau's going to be the one he don't like. But he's not really hating Esau. But what he's trying to show you is this. There is a first birth that we are in that will never, ever please God. Matter of fact, he even tell you, no flesh shall glory in my presence. That's why he said, you got to be. You must be. Because except you are, you can't see nor enter. So we're not talking about, I know, I know we got the thing, you know, you go to church, I understand that. You know, I, I tell anybody, you can go to church, don't make you nothing. Mm, you can go to church, don't make you Christian. I went to my garage yesterday, I ain't no mechanic. <laughs> huh? If it did, I'll go to the post office and be a postman tomorrow. But going, because you go to a place doesn't make you the place. You, you got to understand who you are in him and what he made you to be. Know ye not that your body is his church. You can't get no happy in your body. You can't get no happy in this building than you can in your body. If you ain't happy in here, you ain't happy out here either. Because what Jesus is going to do is going to be in you. No, he came to work in you. So a lot of times we feel like, well, 
I, I, I don't see how that's going to work because, you know, the elder in my life always trying to take control. He always want to have his way. You know, he likes what he likes and he don't like what he don't like. You ever seen that guy? See, it, it's almost like I was riding this morning thinking, you know, we go, we thought the scripture said, looking in the mirror. And see who is the author and finisher of my mess. But the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, <laughs> who is the author and the what now? Yeah, so that's my whole thing. You don't know how to finish what God started, you have no idea. Because He ain't told you how He's going to do it. But I looked to Him. Because he began this thing. Even says this. And the work that I started in you. Guess what? He, guess who's going to finish that? I know some of y'all think you're good confidence and all that kind of stuff. You're not going to finish what he started. He didn't call you to finish it. He calls you to look to him who is the finisher. And it's written. Jacob have I loved. Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. And you got people even now. I used to hear people all the time say, well, maybe God just miffed me, just be messed up. Yeah, that may be. But I believe in your mess up, there's something he's going to bring out that's going to be good eventually. You know what I'm saying? Some of the best has some mess ups. Because one thing about God, he knew you was messed up when he found you. I never been able to understand how you would think that God could love you in the beginning and can't keep loving you till the end. It ain't like he found you perfect. He knew how messed up you were. That's why he went through what he went. Because he already know you couldn't do it on your own. And yet we won't have confidence in what he's done. We want to have more confidence in what we can do. Most people want to go to God and give him their little list and their resume. Well, Lord, you know, I was faithful. Lord, you know, I handed out all the song books every Sunday. You know, I was there when the doors open. Do you think God needs that? He don't. No. All you're doing is trying to tell God why you feel like you deserve one of them small blessings. I used to be riding in the car with my wife saying that song, any way you want to bless me. I said, you don't mean that. We sing songs, we be lying. You know, you sing a lie as well, tell one. Any way you want to bless me, Lord. Any way you want to bless me. You just lying? I don't know nobody living in this talking about just bless me the way you want to bless me because God got some ways of blessing people they don't like. You know that you know that beggar at the rich man's gate? How many of y'all been praying, bless me like that? Huh? Bless me like the beggar. Now, was the beggar blessed? Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. I said, was the beggar blessed? Well, y'all so slow. I'm not sure which way y'all here going on that. Do you think the, that beggar was blessed? Yes. Have you ever wished that you was just like him, blessed like him? Why? No, why? Why is it that you, if you found yourself in that position, why would you not feel blessed? Because, see, we don't define blessing as having God. Now, we saw the rich man. We seen him in the, in the back rat suits and stuff. Eating shrimp, lobster and stuff every day. And we're sitting back just saying, oh, man, that guy is so blessed. But now look at how blessed he was. Mm. Came to the end of life. See how blessed he was? He could buy up a whole, all the water in the world when he was so-called blessed. But when he really got to the end of the life, he couldn't even get a drop off a fingertip. Come on now. Now, isn't that something? He blessed her. 
Beggar? Man got a white limousine, picked him up. Look who was blessed. But see, once, once we began to look at life, like Jacob, here's Jacob. Like I said, there's no way, you know, if I had two sons, I had one like Jacob, I'd probably be in love with Esau. He helped me. He'd go out and hunt, bring home food. Jacob's just hanging around the house trying to scheme all the time. The line ain't going on. Upset me. But all the while, God loved Jacob. You know why God loved Jacob? Because God saw his purpose, even though Jacob and nobody else could. Who would have known that that liar, that schemer, was going to have a name change? He's going to have a rebirth. Who would have known? Just because you was born a liar don't mean you got to stay a liar. Uh, who would have known? Took one moment. God only needs one moment. He don't need a whole lot of time. He don't need no seven-day revival to change you. He just need one moment. Everything God does in a moment. They was changed in a moment. Takes God to touch your life one time. No matter what you went out, but when you come back, it's a different life. He touched Jacob, knocked him loose, disjointed him. But you know what? I bet you his life never was the same after that. That's the way God operates. So as Christian, we have to realize there is a war going on all the time. The Bible says a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So there is always this, this war that's taking place in our lives. You got your elder brother in there trying to always be in control, trying to control. You know, we ask the dude to get behind the wheel and somebody in front of him is kind of slowing down and you honking the horn. That's your elder brother. <laughs> That's the one when he come in, he'll come in, he ain't thankful about nothing. You cook bologna sandwiches and he mad because he wanted steak. I say, hold on, bro, that's not Jesus. That's not what Jesus put in us. See, what we fail to realize, we want to be Christians in the building, but we got to be Christians all the time. Come on now. I don't like that. Whoa, the Bible's saying everything. In what? Give what? In everything? Bologna sandwiches? When I want a steak. In everything. And you're no more like him. You'll never experience his righteousness until you're first able to do what he told you to do. Say, Am I supposed to give thanks in that? Man, my, my car broke down on me. Guess what I'm supposed to do? Guess what that elder brother does? Though? This old junk. But it was good. It was good when it was rolling, but now all of a sudden it goes bad, so we don't give thanks no more. We don't, we don't know what Thanksgiving is. You, your faith in God is exercise in thanksgiving. If you can't give God thanks and everything, you might as well quit. Because he does not, what God doesn't do, he does not excuse you from his word. And what he expects, most people get bad results because they didn't do the right thing. You're not going to not obey. Faith is obedience in the spirit. You got to do what he said do to get it. It's almost like people They'll go to the doctor and get pills and say they ain't going to take them. <laughs> if the doctor writes you out a prescription, if you don't intend to take it, quit going to the doctor. Come on, He'll tell you to take this. Oh I, oh, I forgot my pills. I, am, well, I ain't taking no pills. I'm tired of taking pills. What did you go to the doctor for then? Huh? We come to Christ. He gives you a prescription. And it works like he said work. 
But you think you are an exception to the rule. God didn't know you were going to show up because they ain't like, everybody else stuff ain't like mine. It is something of what he said. There's not one thing happening to you that's not common unto man. Not one thing. For every time that you tell me you had a bad day that somebody in this world is having a worse day. You know what I do? I thank God for this one thing called oxygen. That, that's enough for me to get up and give him thanks every day. Thank you. Let me breathe. Because if he don't let me breathe, I might even have a worse day. Praise God. But anyway. So we got this war going on inside of us all the time. It's always happening. And if you don't become, if you don't begin to recognize that warfare, then you'll just think that you need to adapt, adjust, you know, just kind of float along with your fingers crossed. You know, a lot of Christians are lucky, got rabbit foot and all that kind of stuff, you know, hoping they have good luck, you know. Got a cross in case the vampire comes. Yeah. Garlic alone and all that kind of stuff. I mean, because <laughs> they live lucky. And they're hoping they're going to get lucky. They're hoping that somehow or another, if they can do enough finger crossing, whew, man, whew. you know, police stop them. They got the fingers crossed. Had one couple of them one time, police... Pulled up behind them and they speed and now they want to have a prayer meeting. Why am I going to have a prayer meeting? He didn't stop me for speeding. See, here, here's what's so messed up about us. We can, be, we can be bad, but we call our bad good. And then we want God to get in it. I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed to call on God to tell the police don't give me a ticket because I'm the one who broke the law. You think he's going to be consulting with me like that? No, I'm going to thank him for it because evidently if I give him thanks, he's probably going to help me get that money together to pay that fine. <laughs> but for me, to all of a sudden, I'm going to get real spiritual now in trouble. Lord, y'all hold hands. Everybody agree together right now. Oh, come on, y'all hold hands. Come on, please. Quit trying to play God like that. He don't play like that. He, he's a God in good times and he's a God in trouble. Matter of fact, he's even a better God in trouble. You recognize him more then, but ain't no sense in going out, breaking the law, and now you want to have a prayer meeting. You want God to become a part of your criminal conspiracy. No, go ahead and accept it. I thank the police. You know what I told him? I blew his mind. I said, sir, I said, I appreciate you writing that ticket for me. He said, huh? I said, yeah, I said, you know, because I hadn't slowed down, I may have killed somebody. You know what I'm saying? Could have wrecked. Now, God had a purpose that night. I had come out of Tennessee, been in a, a, a snowstorm. I'm flying. I'm doing 70 and a 35. But I, I've been driving all day. I don't even realize the ice is on the highway. So I, when he stopped me and I realized that, man, my whole friend that iced up, the roads were slick, I'm half asleep. I felt like he was an angel sent from God to save me that night from hurting myself and my family. Now, I could have looked at that $200 ticket And got depressed, but I didn't. Because you got to believe, no matter who you are, all things is working together. And in all things, I am going to give thanks. Okay. Glad we got that behind us. Praise God. So the, your flesh wants the throne. It, it wants the throne. It wants to rule. It wants to be the king. All right? And you... Knowing that old dude so long, you know him better than you know the new one. You have more confidence in what the old guy can do than what the new guy can. All right? 
You, you know, I have more. Look, I know I have certain talents. See, I don't, I don't pray about how to eat shrimp. <laughs> I know how to eat them. Know how to cook them and eat them. So I don't go in a prayer meeting, Lord Jesus. Tell me how to eat these shrimps. But see, there are other things that I may have a lot of talent in. Remember you had those fishermen on the boat? You think they wasn't talented? These fishermen. They've been out there toiling. And when a fisherman fish, he knows how to fish. And he said, we ain't caught, ain't caught, Nothing. Now, can you imagine me coming into your life? You good at what you do, and you the best professional at what you do. I go down on Jarvis job and show him how to run that college or something. Would you take advice from me? Be honest now. If I came and said Jarvis, now this is the way it ought to be done. I ain't, you ain't never seen me do none of that. You've been at this all your life. I show up, I try to tell you how it needs to be done. Now, I, 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 won't, I won't be offended. Because I know you're going to say, you're going to look at me and say, hmm? yeah. That's why he doesn't need fishermen. They know they know how to fish. Jesus gets on this boat and says, hey, I'm going to use your boat a minute. Tell what don't you do? What you push out just a little bit? He ain't smelling like fish. He ain't even got fish clothes on. And they looking at him and saying, wait a minute, man. We've been working like this all night long, done tall, ain't caught nothing. Then you step on this boat, ain't got fish smell on you, nothing. And you're going to tell me where to fish at. I know this lake. Jesus said, let it down. Can you, can you imagine when you think you know everything about life and then Jesus shows up and shows you that you've been fishing way out there somewhere and it was right there on the bank? Isn't that something? Man, when you let God have control and you lose control and God begin to show you all the things that you missed because you thought you knew what you were doing. <laughs> so what we do, how many of y'all like control? How many of y'all like control. See, I, you know, I have such a hard time, I ain't gonna lie to you. It's hard for people to even drive me. My, my wife, I can count times on one hand she ever drove me. You know why? I like control how I die. <laughs> See, I, I want to control how I die. I hate to wake up oh, on the side and we're going off a cliff and she had control of the car. I feel better if I had control. That's me. I know you said, man, he's a control freak. Yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. We all are. Yeah, we all are. And that's the hard part in the kingdom is trying to, Stop being a control freak. Because I like to control my troubles. I like to control everything in my life. Then you get in God. He puts you in a situation where you don't have no control. And then you know what produced after that? You know why so many people worry themselves sick? You know why people worry they get worried because they don't have control. And see, that's the whole thing about life is that worry means that you've been so much in control. See, I can't control nothing outside of me. I cannot control. I can't control my kids. Ain't gonna even try. I can't control how much Interest rate going to be on mortgage payment. I can't control none of that. So ain't no, why am I worried about it? 
It's a foolish person who worry about stuff they can't change. If I can't change it, guess what I'm going to do about it? I'm going to worship him that knows my end and my beginning. I'm going to worship him, not worry. See, I, I don't, when I get to be 100, I still want to look like I'm 68. <laughs> and the reason why is because most people worry themselves sick. Oh, man, I don't know. My man, you know, I, I, I hope they don't get in no trouble. Man, if they do, what you going to do about it? What are you going to do? Nothing. Nothing. Well, I hope they make it. If they don't, what you going to do? Nothing. Nothing. Okay, so now, okay, I sure hope I don't get fired. What if you do? What you going to do? Nothing. Huh? You find another job, right? So why are you worried about stuff? Why are you putting interest, paying all this interest on stuff that ain't never happened? You already sick. I about one time I got so sick, old boy stepped back on the throne. I just quit my job, started a church. I know y'all don't know anything about people. Well, people can be real crazy. And if you get caught up in people, they can drive you crazy. Well, I got caught up in them. Man, I had the old boy telling me, now what you going to do? You out here, what you going to do now? You know, they getting ready to pull a coup and all kind of stuff. I said, what you going to do? Oh, man. I'm walking the floors. Lord Jesus, please, God, help me. Help me. You, you know what? God has never ceased to be my helper. Okay? You do not put your trust in the arms of flesh. He that trusted in God shall never and I was telling God all the good things I was doing for him. Tell him how I was trying to keep his church together. You know what he told me? He the one doing that. Ain't that something? And all the while, I'm thinking I'm in control. I'm controlling everything. Because if I don't do a good work, that means God's work ain't going to happen. Let me tell you something. God was working. He was doing stuff for you ever showed up. And last I read, he didn't ask nobody's opinion about what he was doing. Hmm? He said, when I threw out all that stuff, the stars and Orion and all that, he said, where were you? What were you doing? You was out doing, you didn't even know. So all of a sudden, we think God lost the step. No, because I used to think God was that old dude with the white beard sitting on that throne, real old looking. He couldn't have been young, been around too long. You know, so I'm thinking, you know, I know when I got older and had younger kids, they always told me, but dad, you don't understand. See, I, I, was, I kind of tell God the same thing. You know, you've been there a while. See, you don't understand. There's a new revolution in the earth. You need to understand where we're coming from. Ain't you hear people saying, you need to know where I'm coming from? I already know where you came from. <laughs> we all came from the same place. All right? So I don't need to know where you came from. What we need to be focusing on is where we're going. What is my purpose? I know where we all came from. There is no, no matter where you were born in the palace or in the pup tent, we all came from the same place. So I don't have to know where you came from. Jesus don't know, have to know where you came from because he's more into where you're going, who you are, and what you are right now. He's more into making you into his image. I was riding this morning thinking about that. Here God wants me to be in his image. And we've got people around want to show him what they think he might be. See, when man fell in the garden, the one thing the Bible said, he put cherubs at the entryway. You know what that word cherub means? It means imagination. Now, why is that? 
because it's your imagination that keeps you from experiencing the real glory of God. Because if you think God looks like you, you messed up. He don't look like you. You know, it's good. If God really was concerned about how he looked, he would have waited until we got these little cameras on our phone. But as you notice, not only was he, he didn't even come to look good. He didn't come to look good. Because the Bible said his vision was marred more than any man. So he didn't look good. He was messed up. And so here you come, and you want to express to people your imagination about who you think God is and what he looked like. See, I see God wearing a bow tie. Well, how are you? No? We have people that even argue over the fact whether or not you were a bow tie or not and be a Christian. We have some that believe in wearing a necktie. Because we have an imagination. Some people imagination about God. Your imagination about God is either bring you into his presence or it's keeping you away. Because if I'm looking at myself and, and, and see all the flaws in my life, then I'm thinking God may be flawed too. But my imagination of him, nothing like that at all. Because I'm not looking at me. I'm trying to get my life where he says it's supposed to be hid in him. I got to leave it up to God to create in me his image. There's a reason why he didn't leave you a, a vision of his face. Forget those pictures, right? That was somebody else's imagination. God wants you to know him for yourself. See, I don't see that picture. When I had cancer, I didn't see that picture. I didn't pray to that picture. I never looked to that picture. Never even, I didn't even get that in my mind. When I get down to pray, I ain't trying to get a visual picture of a Jesus. Because number one, God is spirit. And so you're not going to be able to worship a spirit with a human image. He came in the likeness, but not in the sameness. So when I go to present Jesus to anybody, that's why it's what's coming out of you that determines on who you are. You know, you got, you got people that knows how to look it, but can't be it. God is about you being it. He's about human being, not human doings. So we show up, we think we can do enough to be saved. You cannot do what's been done. He the one done enough for you to be saved. Yeah, but I got to earn it. No, you can't. Because if you earn it, it's no more faith. I have to accept it. If a change is going to come in my life, it's because of what I have believed and accepted in him. I got to believe, number one, I'm not, see, God is righteousness. He is my righteousness. Jesus Christ is my righteousness. I cannot do it. I can't ever get above what he's done. I am accepted in him, not in me. I'm accepted in the beloved. What does that mean? It means that God, see, a lot of people feel like they're on the bottom end. You don't let people tell you you ain't amount to nothing. You ain't never going to be there. Let me tell you something. If God says you have been accepted in the beloved, God says that you are highly favored. Guess, who, guess who's telling the truth? Let God be true. Let every man become a liar. I, I'm, not, I'm not asking you to affirm me. I'm not even looking for you even to affirm me. I'm not asking you, what do you think about me? You know what I want to know? I want to know what does God think about me? Because in the end, no matter what they say, you still got to see him. And if he doesn't say, good, guess what? It's bad. But we spend all our lives trying to impress each other. Why? 
If you see one clump of dirt, you see them all. Remember that. You came from dirt and you're going back to dirt. You can put anything you want to on the dirt, but you don't make dirt better. <laughs> oh, man. Look at my dirt. I put good cologne on this dirt. Mm. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I got that good dirt. Yeah, you wish you had this dirt. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, we're just a bunch of dirty people and don't even know it. And we put so much emphasis on our dirt and not on the spirit of God that he gave you to be just like him. See, what should be coming out of us is not coming is because we're too busy trying to take care of our dirty work. Trying to figure out how to make it look better. Let me take it a little bit further now. Show you how good you feel about dirt. Let's see if I had on blue jeans today, I wouldn't feel as good as I feel right now with the bow towel. Dirt feels better today. <laughs> dirt feels better today. You know what? Dirt looking better today. What do you think? When y'all got up this morning, what y'all was thinking about? Getting your dirty self looking better, doesn't you? <laughs> I better quit, but I'll make y'all mad. I ain't trying to make you mad. But, but uh, anyway, let, let me keep going. <laughs> so we, you know, most people serve life, live life out of guilt. There are people filled with so much guilt today. And, and, and let me just say this. When you feel guilty, you want everybody else to be guilty. Now, y'all just keep looking this way. Have y'all ever had a little discussion and someone points out to you some of your badness? And you notice what you do when they point out your badness. When they point your dirtiness out, you know what you used to come back with? <laughs> okay, that might be, but, but you, but you. <laughs> have, have you ever noticed that? Because people who have guilt is looking for guilt in others. You know what I'm saying? So it, when you feel guilty, see, I, I, I haven't always been a preacher. And you know what I used to love in my heyday is to be wrong and make them apologize for me being wrong because I made them feel so bad. <laughs> I'm full of guilt. Dead wrong. But I got to make them feel wronger than me. I got to work on their head a little bit. You know, you tell them something, well, I went now there that, you know, you know what happened, don't you? Mm -mm. Yeah, I was looking for you, couldn't find him. She ate all that up. Okay, I ain't going to never do that to you again. Uh, ain't going to do nothing good because I'm dirty. You know what I'm saying? But we look for what's in us. We try to find it in other people. Because what that does is makes us feel, maybe not superior, but at least equal. So when you find people that all they can do is condemn other people, you know what their problem is? They got a lot of condemnation in themselves. Every time. You can, you can count them. That's why the Bible says for this, therefore now, no condemnation of them that are in Christ. So if I'm in Christ, I don't have that in me. If I, if I don't have condemnation in me, then it means I can't give condemnation out. See, I'm only going to give you what I got, all right? So if I, if I got all of this unworthiness, condemnation, attitude, you know, ain't, you know, one of these good old days, I'm going to be a better person, all that kind of stuff. See, you got a lot of condemnation in you that needs to be excised out. That only comes by one way. 
I has to come, your, your redemption has to come from God. Because if God can ever set you free of your own condemnation, you'll find that you don't have to condemn nobody else anymore. You'll never have to make people feel guilty if you get free. Most people today are not free. They're not free from those things, so it's only natural when they meet other people, they work on it, but it's going to come out sooner or later. Because God did not intend for you to live like that. He gave you his spirit. I'm supposed to operate from his spirit. We have redefined, reconstructed. We got these words. Like I told y'all, we got these words we call love, which is supposed to be one of the most powerful words in our language. And yet, nobody knows what it is. Nobody. They don't seem to understand what it is. See, I thought it. Here we go. See, I thought I had a handle on it. They used to call me Mr. Love. I was had a handle on it. So when I, <laughs> when I got married, I'd already find what love was going to be. Boy, was I surprised. See, I knew this. I said, now, here's the thing. Kelly, you know you love your wife because her name is on your checkbook. <laughs> so you know you love your wife because you feed her every day. Check. <laughs> you know you love your wife. She got a roof over her head. Check. <laughs> You know, I had one, I had a strange experience one day, though. <laughs> I came in the house. My pastor just got through talking to me. He thought he was really spiritual, I think. He called me and said, Kelly, he said, your wife is hurting. Now, you got to understand me now. I just, I just bought her a house. Gave a new pair of shoes, name on a checkbook. And he's telling me she's hurting. So I go in the house. I'm getting ready to tell her how off the pastor is. So baby, you ain't going to believe it. I said, the pastor had the nerve to tell me that you was hurting. I thought she was going to agree with me. She fell off. Yeah. What? What's wrong with her? You don't, you ain't, you don't care for me. Care for you? Don't you know what my love just done? Put your name on my checkbook. Put a roof over your head, feeding you every day, and you don't think that's love? See, I found out that those things was not a definition of love. Because if that's the case, man, some dogs is living better than people. Mm -mm. Yeah. So when she broke down and cried on me like that, man, I was hurt. Kind of hurt a little bit because I done built up, you know, all this love for her. And she couldn't even recognize it. That's, that's devastating. I've been out here working 16 hours a day, and you didn't know I loved you. Did you know I don't just do that? She didn't know that because she was wanting real love. See, I like to carry you go to the store and buy it, give them a rose, you know, give them a little box of candy and send them on their way. Boy, it got so quiet in here. Give a couple of dollars, go egg to the store. That's love. 
Y'all know that's love? How many know it's not love? Yeah, but y'all, st- y'all love it though, don't you? <laughs> it ain't love, but y'all love it, all right? Yeah. Yeah, because boy, the more they give, oh man, you got to, oh man, you ain't going to believe what he gave me today. Man, you ain't going to believe what he bought me. You ain't going to believe where we went there yet. That is not love. You find out how much you love when you have your first, I don't say altercation because we don't fight. When you first meet your first divide in the road, then you find out what love is. Then you're going to find out, was it really love? Had a couple one time, you just come in every week, every Sunday, every Sunday three years into a marriage, every Sunday, they fighting. So finally I said, can you tell me the first time y'all ever was happy? I said, think about that. They both were looking. "Hmm." I knew they was messed up. They didn't even have one day they could look at and say they had a good day. Not one. Because I'm going to help them work back to that day. We don't wake up one day and fall out of love. That don't happen. You, you'll never wake up one day and all of a sudden you, I don't love you no more. Well, you never did in the first place. It don't work like that. Oh, uh, Let's go something else. This stuff be getting too rough on y'all. I don't want y'all to be feeling bad about anything, you know, because a lot of people think think they are in love. And they and really they just putting up with. Oh. So, <laughs> I'm just saying, y'all, 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 y'all forgive me, but I'm just saying now. You know, if, if you, you know how it is, you know, you told us, marry a Christian. If you marry a Christian, that's supposed to work. Right? Well, yeah, they did. When I came in, you know, they said, marry a Christian. That's the only thing going to work. Well, see, what we didn't understand is that them Christian people still had them same old attitudes. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and see, when that, that song they sang in church wasn't the same one they sang it on. You know what I'm saying? They weren't singing that same song. Because I, I, I've never been to understand how do you get up every day fighting You know what the Bible said? Love your enemy. Right? Amen. Isn't it strange you can't love the enemy that you once called friend? Oh, Jesus. Anyway, let me go on past that. That's, this hole is getting too deep. This is not a counseling session or anything like that. Sometimes we, we have a mixed message that we send to people. Because we tell people, get good so you can get more of God. And so what we do, we strive so hard to work overtime to get good. Only find out we come up short. One thing I learned about life, if you keep hitting that brick wall and failing, after a while you decide you don't want to try it all. I told you all about that big old elephant. You know how they train him for a little chain? 
they put a big chain on him when he was small. When he was small, they put a big chain around his leg. He knew how far he could go on that big chain because he couldn't break it. He got him used to when he reached a certain place to stop because he can't break the chain. So when that elephant gets grown, they put a little chain on him. And the moment he feels any kind of resistance, he stops. Because in his mind, he's saying, I can't go no further than this chain allows me. See, many people in life, we get, we get hurt, scarred early. Some of us get chains wrapped around our minds early. And we'll get to a place where we know we've never been that far. This is the reason why God is so important in our life. Because God is not trying to keep you where you are. He's trying to take you further than you've ever been. And so what happened, though, you got this big old log chain been on you since you was a kid. I mean, one time my daughter said we had painted up on top of the wall about up this high. Matter of fact, it was Anna. She said, I called them all in. Who put that paint? Who put that up on the wall? Everybody said, not me, not me. Anna said, Anna said, well, you know it wasn't me because I can't reach up that high. <laughs> but come to find out, she could. <laughs> but see, many of us got this thing in our mind is that we don't believe we can go any farther than we've been. And every time we try to get above that, it seems like we got resistance. And a lot of people settled for that, to live in that resistance. I can't. That's why the Bible tells you, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. You're right, you can't. You got a blockage. You don't ever want to go where you've never been. One thing scares us more than anything is trying to go where we've never been. I wouldn't mind moving. But I got so used to Decatur, looking at the same thing. I hate the thought of learning new streets. Blockage. So here you are. You've been limited. Not by God. God is not the one limiting you. There is no limit on him. None. But once we start allowing us to be in control of our lives and call the shots, we always, our faith always go as far as our flesh will let it. Very limited. Then if we happen to do something good, then we'll get real spiritual. Ain't God good? God has always been good. Whether you recognize now, he's been good all the time. So we desire, again, like Ishmael, Abraham's firstborn son. He would love that boy. Ain't nothing like your firstborn, man. Yeah, firstborn son, love him. That's, that's your seed. That's your progenitor. That's the one going to carry on the legacy. And he went to God and said, God, I would that Ishmael could walk before you. In other words, I want you to bless my firstborns. I want you to bless him. And you know what God told him? Sometimes the things he tells us seem so hurtful. Almost seemed cruel. He said, Abe, hey, send that boy away. Send him away because he's never going to walk before me. And here's Big Dad. He's crying. Oh, Lord, please don't send him away. He's my pride and joy. It's your pride and joy. It's not God's pride and joy. So you know what happens? Then he sends the boy away. 
Then God comes back even with a worse thing. Now, may you get rid of your pride and joy and then turn around and give you what he wants you to have and then turn around and tell you to kill it. It almost seemed like he, he wasn't having a heart with this thing. But see, like again, God has a purpose. So he sends Ishmael away, then tell Abraham, I want you to go now and offer this boy up. I want you to suck, kill him. In other words, I want you to kill him. Whew. Now, see, I know in our religious mind, we always talk about, boy, I wish I was like Abraham. I wish I was like Daniel. Wish I was like a Hebrew boy. See, I don't wish none of that. Mm, I just, I wish, and thank God, he made me Kelly Wilson. Let only Kelly Wilson trouble be here. All right? That's all I need. I don't need nobody else's. I don't need Daniel's, Abraham's. Because, see, that would be a hard testament for God to tell me to kill my son. And you don't know whether he's going to say no or not. So you're going up here. God says, I want worship. Can you, can you, would you be to come in here today and lift your hands and say hallelujah or something and God just told you to off your boy? Would you be to go come in and worship? Would you? Hmm? Man, he, he'd be exacting some real stuff from us. I don't think I'd be feeling like that. I don't even feel like teaching today. And I ain't killing nobody. But he got this man up here, kill him. And here he is, because, man, who in here wants to disobey God? Don't raise your hand. Don't, condu- don't indict yourself. <laughs> I don't want you to indict yourself. Man, I, if God tells me, I'll do whatever God says. Don't indict yourself today. I know better. I know better. You may say that because it's the right thing to say when you're in here. Tell me. Tell me what you want me to do. I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'll go where you want me to go. You are lying. You, you're saying all that. That sounds good. But see, God, what I love about God, all these tests of lying we've been doing, we don't keep on singing that, I'll take me anywhere you want to take me and do what you want to do. We don't keep singing that, that ain't going to be true. So he says, kill this dude. How many of you think he really loved God? Just don't say nothing. It's a rhetorical. How many of you think he really loved God? In our hearts, in our minds, we all want to say, I love God. I love God. But is it strange how much we love him? Because, see, you don't know how much you love God till love is put to the test. Right? You have no idea. I can sit here and tell you right now how much I love God, but I really don't know how much that love is so it's put to the test. See, I, I would have loved God like Abraham if I had all of a sudden I'm getting all the cows and all the sheep and they just piling up and I got, I start out with no servant. I got 300 servants now. Man, I love God. And then he come on and ask me to do something like this. Because God wants to know, do you love the stuff or do you love me? Because that's nothing God gave you that he can't replace. That's nothing he's going to ask me for. If I gave it up, he can't give it back. He took everything from Job. It wasn't a happy feeling. That boy complained. Cursed the day was born. He's just sitting here scraping all them souls. Wife done went crazy on him. <laughs> man, why is my wife always messing up? I hate to say that, man. It does look like them women definitely be messing them men up, don't they? I'm not a male chauvinist by a long run, but it seems like all the trouble we got into is always a woman messing us up. You know what I, I am. I'm just teaching up. Job had a wife. She was doing good when they had all the cows and things. 
he kind of went bankrupt. Lost everything. You know what she told him? Let me put you in the layman's turn now. I can see this. She's in the kitchen slamming dishes down. <laughs> you pitiful. You are pitiful. You need to just go ahead and curse God and die. Just to keep looking this way. Because see, sometimes we don't understand what God is doing in the other person's life. And sometimes that affects what's happening in my life. The easiest way to do is kill it. She's thinking, I know she didn't have one of them insurance policies back then. But <laughs> she didn't have that insurance policy back then. But I'm going to tell you this here. Is that she wanted him to curse God and die. But look what God done. After everything is said and done, after everything is over, because what God needs to know is, is what you need to know. Sometimes we think we love God until it's come time for us to love God. You know, now he says, Abraham, now I know. Not only does Abraham know, but now he knows. How far can you go? I have no idea. I don't even want to put God to the test. I ain't even trying to ask him, show me. Let me show you how much. No, no, just take your time with me. Take your time with me. I, I like baby steps. You know what I'm saying? Baby steps. Don't throw it on me like that. Take your time. I believe I love him. It's about that time, ain't it? I believe I love him. But, I, I, but God does not call you here to prove to anyone how much you love God. You don't need to prove it to anybody. Because the only body you need to prove it to is him. He's the only one going to really test the proof. What we say is one thing and what we are and what we become is another. So he's going to test it. The greatest test in your life is going to be the test of love because I heard a man on the radio this morning early. He ain't even a Christian. He's got to talk about it. He said, man, without love, faith don't even work. And he ain't even a Christian. I'm saying... You want faith? You really want faith? People talk about, boy, we don't have enough faith. No, you don't have enough love in your life. That's the problem. Because love only works by faith. We got to see God in a whole different light. Because we want more faith so we can work on our works. And then put Jesus' name on it. And the only time you put Jesus' name on anything, if it turns out good. Yeah, it's the Lord. He did it. I got to let you go. Any questions, statements, anything like that right now? We good?